Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where today I want to talk about the dehaze tool that is in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Now if you saw my video on Sunday, which was about photographing football in the rain, I mentioned a couple of times during that video that I occasionally use a dehaze tool just to help clear up backgrounds when shooting in like misty and, and drizzly rainy conditions. Now if you're using say a newer or higher end camera, this tutorial probably isn't going to be all that relevant for you. However, if you're on maybe a lower spec camera or an older camera body, such as what I use myself, then these types of conditions with that poor light when you've got the, the mist and the rain coming in, and then if, if you're in a sporting environment, you have that floodlight glare against that mist as well, then this effect can really help uh, clear up uh, a messy photo. So Adobe introduced a dehaze tool probably 18 months ago now, and it's something I remember looking at at the time, but didn't really initially strike me as being something I'd use very much in sports photography. Uh, the demo at the time, I remember it had this, this landscape image on the Adobe website, and it was kind of a misty valley with loads of trees and stuff on the background. And um, they basically used a dehaze tool to remove a lot of that mist and make that a clearer photo. And it was a really great little demonstration actually as to what the tool can do. But as I said, I didn't really see at that point how this could be relevant for sports photography. However, a few months back, I was shooting a game and I didn't have my primary camera body available to me. Uh, it was rainy, it was dark, and the football stadium I was shooting at had really poor floodlights. My image ended up noisy because the ISO was cranked up. Um, and with the drizzle in the background and that and the floodlights, everything just looked a little bit soft and really like, low contrast. So I decided to see at that point if this dehaze tool or slider could help in my particular scenario and I actually found it really useful. So the game I used to shoot Sunday's video, so the um, how to photograph football in the rain, I think it was called, um, that actually had perfect conditions for demonstrating the usefulness of this tool. Um, and again, if your camera does handle low light particularly well and doesn't introduce a ton of noise, uh, then you'll probably get away without using this. Certainly if you've got a full frame camera, um, you'll probably be, be sound without. However, my primary body is a Canon 1D Mark IV. It's a great camera. I bought it used probably six six years ago. Uh, it's an absolute workhorse of its day. But it is now a 13-year-old camera. It's, my one is still working off the original shutter, as far as I know. It's showing its signs of age, and it really struggles in poor light. So when I get that high ISO to compensate, the conditions from that game actually made the photos look really messy and really soft and, and low contrast again. Uh, let me just so you see. I've sorry, I've been stuck on this one photo. If I just cycle through some of these, you'll see that in the background, um, it is obviously raining, but beyond that, you've got a bit of noise in there, but you've also got this horrible mist and this glare. And that is because in the top left here, just out of shot, is one of the floodlights. And so that's basically um, reflecting or illuminating all that mist and gloom that's in the stadium. And a lot, along with the ISO, uh, high ISO, it's producing a bit of noise as well. You end up with just I don't know, it just doesn't look great as it looks, um, I say, a little bit soft and there's, there's worse images than that as well, trust me, um, among some of these. And so what I decided to do for that game is so this is going to be a perfect example in which to show the usefulness of this dehaze filter in Lightroom. So the noise in the image um, is pretty high and it isn't helped, I say, by those floodlights and the rain and the mist. So let us start to use that dehaze uh, tool to, to show you here in Lightroom initially how you can really start to improve the photos. So load the photo that you want up. I've got um, selection of photos here at the bottom from that game in November and start with this one. Obviously if I'm editing this, um, this is obviously fresh out of the camera, I'll, I'll probably crop it in a bit, little bit, um, maybe not that tight. Uh, anyway, so what we do is when you're in a develop tab, if you scroll down a little bit on the right hand side, when you get to this present section, you've got texture and clarity. You'll see the haze is just beneath that. And if you were to slide this up to the right, just watch the background around the around the, the subject. So the player in white is my subject. Watch the background as I slowly slide this up. So you see, we've gone, I've gone quite high there to, to 38. But you see, what it's done is it's removed a load of that um, glare and that mist from the background that was kind of distracting your eye a little bit. Let's move some of that away. And if I quickly do a before and after, you'll see top versus bottom. I hope you can see that. So here's a, here's a comparison there. 
and you see straight away there's a lot more contrast and, and definition in the aftershot beneath there that will really, um, I think, makes a ton of difference to the image. Now, one thing you have to watch when you're using this tool is it does uh, sometimes then need a little bit of a, a push-up in terms of exposure, so you might want to just take this up ever so slightly like that. You can also use the contrast to add more contrast if you need to, um, and clarity if you're shooting in particularly dark conditions, I find. Certainly if you're with an older camera, you need that little bit of um, extra clarity in the image. This can help also. Just be aware, and you probably know this already, the more of these um, sliders and adjustments you're using and making, and, and the, the higher level of those. So I've got the haze set at 38 here. If I was to crank the contrast really high and the exposure high, uh, and maybe a couple of other things, not only are we um, making the image look ridiculous in this example, but also you're going to introduce a little bit more noise and distortion into the image as well. So um, try and use it sparingly. Let me just take these back to where they were. Try and use it sparingly, the haze, but you'll see in that example how that is really, if I just turn it off and on again, um, okay, you'll see how much difference that, that makes. Okay, a couple more examples for you just before we move on. So again, I mentioned in my video on Sunday about um, these shots being quite quite nice in terms of getting the, the fan, um, the players turn around to look at the fans and you're getting that, that rainy, misty background. But it's probably too much of it, certainly up here. It's, it's just horrible. Um, you can tell this is fresh out of the camera and not touched up at all, by the way, because uh, of this guy's face on the left-hand side, and it's, it will irritate me if I don't get rid of that. So there we go, let's get, get rid of him. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so we can see the uh, the impact De Hayes is going to have. So again, we, we go down in the Develop tab, right-hand side, find De Hayes, and we're just going to slide that up a little bit like that. And again, I've gone quite high, but you see instantly it, it's made things a lot clearer. Uh, it looks a little bit more detailed. Again, we can do the, the option and why if you're using a Mac to do the before and after. If we zoom in, even if you look at the back of the shirt here where the guy's name is, it looks a lot clearer, a lot more defined. There's more contrast in there as well, and his face is looking better as well. So do you see what I mean? That the haze tool for me can really, um, when you've got these horrible conditions and bad light, it can really make quite a big difference to your image. And it is so quick to do. If, you, if you're in Lightroom as part of your workflow, it's here on the right hand side uh, in the develop tab ready for you to go as one of the basic editing um, options or functions right there. I'll hop to Photoshop in a minute and show you where you can find the same tool in that as well. Um, let me just see if we can do a couple more examples just to show you how it works um, in some better than others. So this is one of the manager shots um, that I take, took. This wasn't one I used and, and submitted to the club because I, I wasn't happy with it. It's, um, while the face is in focus, I, it's just far too much um, kind of overexposure from the glare there. Just using that dehaze can really help us just bring some of that back. Um, again, let's see if we've got... I, I'm sure I put a really wide shot that I took during the game. Well, not a wide shot, sorry, but a really zoomed out shot I took during the game purely to demonstrate this. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, this was the one I think. So this wasn't taken to be a nice photo. It was taken because we can see how rubbish, um, how noisy, how how misty, how just yucky that that background is. And if we slide the dehaze up, this isn't going to make this a good photo. But you will see how much it starts to clear a lot of that rubbish and mess and distortion to cross the front of the image there. Okay, so that's the haze. I think I have a couple of celebration shots we can tweak this on as well if I haven't already. Uh, let me just find some of those sellies. So nice celly on the third goal. Um, in that game, the, the player ran towards me. Now you see because the glare is kind of off to the left-hand side, we don't need as much dehaze here, if any, at all. Let's just see if this makes any difference. A tiny bit, so you see, again, it's just reducing that floodlight glare in the top corner. I'd probably... It's what I said before, I only use it very occasionally and I'll try and use it sparingly when I do. An image like this, I you know, I think we can we can crop it and we can do little bits if we want to lift it exposure wise or whatever in other ways without without using dehaze. This image I'm gonna guess is gonna work a little bit better for this tool because you've got a lot more glare and mist. Um a haze if you like. So let's yeah, go crank that up and see straight away it's um, I know I've gone far too far there. I'm still straight in the point. I'll probably maybe leave it there as a maximum. But you see, as we do crank it up, that that white glare and overexposure off of the floodlights is, is disappearing in front of our very eyes, and the player becomes a lot clearer. 
you'll see it's also gone really quite dark as well and probably a little bit moody and underexposed and starts to look a little bit fake. If you take any of these sliders too high, um, you almost start to head towards HDR territory. Um, you can increase the exposure. Obviously, those those bright, glary spots are going to um, come back to the fore a little bit. So, again, it's about tweaking your image and, and making sure it's right for what you're trying to do. So, that's it in, um, in Lightroom. Great little tool to use. Um, I, I just think it can really help when you get a photo that, here we go, there's another great example. When you get a photo that is a bit messy and soft and low contrast, and you've got that yucky background, um, you can jump in, use dehaze, and it will really help try and uh, bring that back a little bit. I've got the same images open, or a couple of them here in Photoshop as well. So if you're more of a Photoshop user as part of your workflow, or you do more of your editing in here, you can still access this tool. You do it both these programs with raw images or you can do it as jpegs these are just jpeg images here so if we go to filter and we go to camera raw filter and what this does is it loads pretty much the same interface as you'll have in um lightroom in terms of the layout of the the edits on the left hand side the different settings here and you'll see the haze once again or dehaze <laughs> is just below clarity and texture if we start to crank that up You'll see the same effect is applied here in Photoshop as well. Um, let me see if we've got any other good examples we could use this off. Uh, some of these photos are absolutely rubbish, aren't they? Um, let's try this one. So I've, again, I selected this because there's so much um, haze and glare in the background. And there it goes. We crank that up. Do you see, this actually works really well on a wider shot like that because that's where we were currently. There's a lot of white mist and haze and rain in the background. And as we take that slider up, it really clears it up. We can maybe tweak the exposure slightly as well, like that. And obviously you can crop in and, and make other edits as well to improve the image. So that's it really. That's all I wanted to show you and, and how I've um, how I've used the hazes occasionally in sports photography. I think it's a really useful, great little tool. Please drop in the comments if you've liked this video, if you found it useful. If you agree, if you disagree, and also if there's any other tools um, or filters or edits and tweaks you use in, in Lightroom or Photoshop that perhaps you might not initially think of as being that useful for sports photographers, um, but actually you found useful, feel free to, to drop it in the comments. I'd be really interested to, to see it and, and maybe learn it myself and, and do a couple of videos on it in future as well, possibly. And again, if you like any of my videos, I'd love it if you could like the video and also subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next video.